Hi everybody, so today we're looking at stoichiometry um, example B and the question we're looking at is 2015 question 10C. Uh, I think when a lot of students saw this question they were put off because they saw so many of these equations here but it, actually, it was actually one of the easier questions to answer in terms of stoichiometry for a while. So let's have a look um, at what we have to do. Okay, let's look at, just go straight to part I and we can see is what is meant by a mole of a substance. Well this is actually very easy. All you need to know is one mole of a substance contains 6 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. That's it. One mole of a substance contains 6 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms or particles. Um, or we know 6 times 10 to the power of 23 is Avogadro's number, so you could say is uh, you could use that definition instead um, and say that um, one mole contains. 6 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms or Avogadro's number um, so that's fine look we have part I answered there so part 2 so how many moles of magnesium react with silicon dioxide to produce 7.6 grams of magnesium silicide well there's a lot of information being given here okay um, but let's just figure out what we're actually being asked the question is asking us to figure out how many moles of magnesium react with silicon dioxide to produce 7.6 grams of this guy over here. So therefore we're going to be using our formula being number of moles equals mass over MR. Now if we plug magnesium into that we'll quickly find out that we don't have the mass of magnesium here or up here or down here. Okay so we actually can't use that formula here for magnesium but we can use it for a workaround. So for instance, say for argument's sake, we used it for the magnesium silicide over here. Well, we can use our ratio in terms of the moles to figure out what the um, magnesium um, number of moles are. So we're going to change that to Mg2Si. And we're told that the mass is 7.6 grams. And that's going to be going over the MR. Now I'm going to cheat a small bit here and just tell you what the MR is straight off, okay? Um, to save a little bit of time. So we have 7.6 grams over 76, so therefore we're getting 0 0.1 moles of your Mg2Si. Now that's not what we were asked. We were asked for the number of moles of magnesium, okay? But we can see here that we have a ratio of 1 is to 4. So that means if I have 0 0.1 moles of magnesium, I will therefore have four times as much moles for your Mg um, magnesium over here. So if I have 0 0.1 moles of magnesium silicide, I will have four times as much magnesium. So therefore we have 0 0.4 moles of magnesium. That's our answer. So we're going to highlight that, make it nice and clear. Okay, and we're going to move on then. Okay, to the next one. And just gonna break this up a bit. And we're going to go on to part three of our question. So part three is asking us, calculate the number of moles of hydrogen chloride, so that's the hydrogen chloride here, required to react with 7.6 grams of magnesium silicide. Okay. Again, if we use our number of moles formula is equal to mass over more, we don't have the mass of HCl. But why can't we just why can't we not just um, apply the ratio again? So we know the number of moles for magnesium silicide being zero point one, and we can see there are four times as many for HCl. So it's very similar again, guys. It's simply going to be in this case here now is going to be zero point one times four equals zero point four moles of your HCl, the hydrogen chloride, and we'll highlight that. Now, this question is actually broken up into two parts. If we go back up here, we can see there that um, for the second part, it's what mass of magnesium chloride is produced. So let's go over here. We need silicide, HCl, and we've got our magnesium chloride here. So if we write out the formula for mass. Okay, so mass equals number of moles times the MR. Okay, so if we're doing that, Okay, and this is of your MgCl2, 
the MOR is easy enough to figure out. So, okay, we can just go to your periodic table for that and you'll get your 95. Okay, now the number of moles. Well, I'm just going to do the ratio of this once again. Okay, it's the easiest way forward. We know 0 0.1 moles of magnesium silicide here and that there is twice as many for the magnesium um, chloride. So therefore, we are going to have 0 0.2 moles of um, of magnesium chloride. And when you multiply the two of those together, okay, you'll get your um, your 19 grams of MgCl2. Highlight it. So that's the mass. Okay, the final part so is asking us um, for part IV, and I'll just do it down here altogether. Let's see what we've been asked. Um, what volume of oxygen and gas measured at room temperature and pressure is required for the complete combustion of selenium produced from 7.6 grams of magnesium silicide? Okay, we can get rid of the majority of that sentence. Okay, all we're asked here is to figure out the volume of oxygen and gas measured at room temperature and pressure. Well, as soon as that appears, guys, okay, there's only one formula you can use. Okay, and that has to be volume equals number of moles times 24, okay, and it's 24 liters. The reason it's 24 is because it's room temperature and pressure, okay, um, and that's just a formula you have to learn off. If it was STP, it would be 22.4, okay, but we're not dealing with STP, we're dealing with room temperature and pressure. So we go back here and we're looking for oxygen and gas. So oxygen, if we're looking at this, is a two in front of us. Okay, so we can be agreement there that if magnesium silicide is 0 0.1, there's going to be twice as many for oxygen. So we're actually dealing with 0 0.2 moles of oxygen times your 24. And when you multiply the two of those together, you want to get 4.8 liters um, for our volume. And it didn't say whether to measure us in liters or centimeters cubed. So we can leave it as this. That's our volume. And that's it guys for um for this one. Really like it was again, it's just the number of moles, getting the ratios between them all. And once you have that, you might have to do an additional formula, such as um the gases here in terms of the volume of the gas. If that takes place, just look at room temperature and pressure, and you'll know which one to use. Um that's it, so guys. Um thanks for watching and I hope it helped a small bit.